Welcome to the Show Me so Podcast me up, <laughs> with your like host, 17th Jeff episode, and Lewis. I'm like, ah! <laughs> Every episode, a guest joins Jeff and discusses how images tell stories and what makes them work or not. Thank you, Carter. All right, everybody, this is Jeff Livingston. Welcome to the Show Me Podcast, episode something in season two. I'm not sure which yet. We're recording a whole bunch, and then we're going to put them out in the winter here. So I'm going to show you something? You're going to show everybody why a story works, at least. And then we have you here to talk very, about a very special type of photography. But before we get into that, I want to introduce you, and I also want to thank Panama, who is our sound engineer. Panama, welcome to the show. Voila. All right. And then today's very special guest is Jeffrey Morris, who is a DC photographer and extraordinaire. He does all sorts of types of photography, but his main uh, bread and butter, if you would, is mm. is probably pet photography, that and event photography, and that's how he and I know each other. But um, and family and family, right? right? And he's moving to LA. Yes, I am. So I had to grab this guy and sit him down before he got out of town and make sure we got some of that wisdom. Not until April. Not until April. So but I'm still around. So he's still around, but we want to talk before you get out of here. And, uh, you know, we're excited to have you. Excited to be here. And so with that, I did want to talk about uh, uh, pet photography sure. and animal photography in general, just because uh, you're very good at it. And on Thank top you. of it, it's something that I've always kind of liked. Ooh, we lost our little cue there. Um, but, uh, you know, it's something I, I like a lot. I'm really amazed when I see beautiful, uh, wildlife photos or pet photos or people with their animals. And that's definitely a very popular type of photography. And believe me, living with a little kid, I see it all the time yet. I, I just can't see doing it. And, 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 and I see a lot of bad animal photography right. too, particularly on Instagram as usual. But, uh, <laughs> I want to add, I want to really ask you. I think by now everyone knows your feelings about Instagram. I know it's like the it's this love hate thing. Yeah, I know. I agree. I find myself posting it's like the shopping mall. Less and less. It's terrible. Um, so, but with that, like first of all, let's talk about somebody that influenced you a lot on that front, and then we'll dive into some of your own work. Sure. Um, and as we get in there, let me make one distinction that. Um, I see animal photography, wildlife photography, and pet photography. It's very, very different. There are some common overgrounds, but pet photography, I actually, at least my approach to it, is much more like my approach to family photography right. than it is to wildlife. I don't, I'm, I'm sucky at wildlife. I'm, it's just. Uh, Stop lying. I saw you running around with that 600 millimeter lighter. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have one, but and that's probably that's one of the reasons why I suck at it. Um, yeah, but yeah. So, but we'll talk about that when we talk we'll about talk telling about stories with it, because okay. it's a different story that you're telling. Right. And so the guy we're going to talk about today is Joel Sartori, who's still around and still very active and very geo active. photographer. Right. Yeah, I saw his photo art project at the um, Annenberg Space for Photography in LA. Um, and it, it's an, if it comes around, go see a show, go to his website. Um, it's, it's incredible photography. Right. What, what brought him to you? What, what, what about his work kind of attracted you? Well, the, Joel's approach, was, so the, the photo art project, for people who don't know about it, is um, he started about 15 years ago, and he, what, what he's trying to do um, with funding from National Geographic is he's trying to um, get portraits of every species that is under human care right now, which is over 12,000. Mm. Now, not all of those are extinct, going extinct or anything, but they're all right now dependent on humans um, to survive, for the mm. species to survive. So he's trying to build this photographic arc. Um, and his approach to it, and what, wow. I, what draws me to him, is he is very explicitly and somewhat controversially not trying to shoot animals in their habitat. He's not a documentary wildlife photographer. Um, he's not trying to shoot, you know, lions in, on safari or anything like that. He is doing portraits. And his whole reason for doing that is that he's trying, he wants the viewer to get a personal relationship with the subject, the same way that a portraitist, portraitist? That a portraiture photographer would do. So he's really focused on getting you in. So he's doing more. So he's doing portraits of these, of these animals, very studio-like, right. even though it's all makeshift studios. Um, and uh, it's really fascinating how he does that and his whole approach to it. 
a lot of wildlife photographers do not think highly of him because it's like removing the animals from their natural habitat. But to Too, me... But it's impactful, right? Exactly. To and it me, tells the story. It's especially because he does things that I don't know that I could do, which is he's getting you to relate to a mollusk or a crustacean. Right. And that's a hard task to get you to really feel a relationship with these critters. Um, you know, with a cute puppy, a cute golden retriever puppy, it's not that hard to get you to relate to it. But Speaking of, we got our first Joel's of Sartori photos. And right. It's cute white and that's dog. Not a, it's actually not a dog. Is it's, it, a, is it it's, a fox? It's some sort of white fox. I'm not sure exactly what it is. I picked that, though, because it's the closest to what I do, which right. is a canine sort of animal. Interesting. And the reason why I picked it is because is, is what, and this is what I got from Joel, um, or at least affirmed what I was doing. Um, you know, so when you think of pet photography really high level, um, you, there's a few different kinds of approaches to it, and one is like personifying the pet, mm -hmm. um, which I think... Family the, member almost, right? Um, well, actually, even going past that to, to doing real personifications, because um, I do a lot of family photography with pets, but um, to the point, but I'm talking like the extreme of that would be William Wegman, who does those um, Weimariners, and he puts them in human clothes and has human props. Right. And this isn't silly. I mean, if you look at his photography, it is amazing photography. He's been doing this for years. Cool. Um, and it's totally amazing work, but it's, it's like the extreme of personification. Um, or you get to the people who do these like really cool things like um, um, Castile, who does those underwater shots with super wide angle lenses. And it's really amazing photography, but it it's gets you more interested in the, in the technique, in the, that wide angle cool look, right. than it does give you a relationship with that individual. So my approach and, and Satori's approach is more going for that individual right? Um, and drawing, getting you via the expression, um, really focusing on the expression to get you to get a kind personal make you relationship. Emote, right? Yeah, it's kind of like, it's kind of like draws you into, I can relate to this, I'm, I'm interested in the subject more than in technique or anything like that. So looking at these guys here, was what that like a field mouse? Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> it's kind of like a rat, you know, a like a thing. It's, it's, some, it's, it's some sort of rodent. <laughs> it's some sort of Which rodent. is something you normally would not feel passionate or likable towards. But yes, exactly. this is a very likable little animal. Right. And part of what he does is, is um, to get you to, to focus on the expression right. that they're doing, that it's an individual expression, is he strips out the backgrounds. Um, so the white backgrounds, if it's a small animal, that probably was in studio. Um, the black backgrounds that he uses, it's mainly like um, black tarp. Okay. And But he uses lighting so that the light falls off really fast, so it's lighting the subject, but it never hits the background. Right, makes so sense. So it turns black. Um, Beauty dishes and the like. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and, and so... We're talking gear. Well, sort of. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sort of, but one is so he's focusing on expression with with this one and and the next one that we're gonna see. Um, what, what is that? I think it's, it's a blue eyed some like sort of lima or something. Le Lemur, lima, yeah, or rat. Or um, <laughs> but with, with, if I don't know what it is, it's a rat. <laughs> and with those, he's getting you to relate to them primarily through their eyes. Oh, um, but with look the, at that expression. Like, with the lima, though, it's also the grin. Yeah, um, and the shrugging of his shoulders. You yeah, know, he's kind of got like a wily little look. You and know? so you start imagining, or her, you know. And so you start imagining what it, what is it thinking? What's it, what's it looking at? And you and you start filling in the gaps, which is how you form a, you get a viewer to form a relationship. Mm -hmm. um, the same. I mean, it's a standard owl shot, but not one because it's that clear background. It's that studio sort of portrait. Right. Um, but the other is, is look at the expression on that guy's face. It's just incredible. Well, also the eyes, too. It reminds yep. me of this um, show. I think it's like Woo Assassins. No, that's not, not it. It's, um, it's an AMC show where they have these like crazy postmodern lords, but they have these magic powers where their eyes just like, yep. you know what I'm talking Follow about? Follow you around. and Yeah, yeah. No, then their eyes turn, like fill up with like some sort of like dark blood. And wow. Ooh. And it looks like that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like crying. I could pull up the show anyway. It's uh, it's like almost like it's cute, but then it's kind of scary. I agree. And it is a predator, but but it looks so harmless there. It looks like a stuffed yeah. animal. So it sticks its claws in your eyes, man. Yeah, it's it true. turns your eyes looking like that, man. That's true. <laughs>
No, but so no, it's definitely it's uh, the show is called Badlands. Sorry. Um, no, it's a it's a fantastic portrait, and uh, seeing Al that closely with that kind of detail, not in flight yep. or on a tree, is amazing. If you go to his website, there's a, there's some videos of the background of how he does this and all the prep that goes into shooting each one of these. It's it's actually quite a lot. Um, the the one that follows it, um, and the reason I included that among the samples, this gorgeous little little monkey here. One of it's a mandolin. Um, I, yeah, again, I'm not a wildlife person, but the, but the reason I included that, the reason I wanted to show that one was because he, um, one, of, one of Joel's techniques to do this, to get you to, to focus in on their expression and nothing else, is his use of light. Right, and comes so in from the side. In here. this one, he's getting that light, light just too. on the face, but notice how it falls off of the body? Yeah, it's very small. He light. wants you focused on. He wants you to draw you, the you, the viewer into that face, and the highlights too. Are exactly, just fantastic. Exactly, on the, on the right gorgeous. side of the subject. Yeah, exactly. And she's a redhead. And I'm going to say she this time, if you like. Yeah, or you know, whatever. He. But that's the whole point: is to get you to start imagining those things, right? Yeah. Rather than just wondering about whether it's going to kill something tonight. Yeah. <laughs> which, which when you see when you see Sartorius photos, you don't think that at all. No. When you see a, in them the wildlife, you do. It's it's trying to get you to think of these animals more less in a generic way, um, and less in a biological species, and more as something personal. Because his view is, is that if we think about animals personally, right, that we'll care more about them and we'll want to save them, and put more into them. And that's his whole mission. That's awesome. So that's, that's really cool. Yeah. Has he been successful in your mind? Oh yeah. Yeah, the photo art tour has drawn so many people. So one of his other ways of getting you to focus on expression is not with light, but with using low depth of field so that the focus is right on the eyes and that hand. This also shows you how it's not right. only the eyes. It's look at look at the hand. It adds so much to the expression in this photo. Right. But then by doing it's, it's also... Very human, right? Yeah. It's also in the next photo that we're going to get to of the whatever cat, cat breed that is. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to end there because it's also a, something that I would do. It's more of a cat. Right. But using that low depth of field keeps you focused in on those facial expressions rather than on the less important things in the photos. 100%. Um, so he does that a lot as well, uses this really low depth of field where it just falls out of focus everything behind the face and that's one thing that you'll see in my photos that i do a lot as well boy you know it was funny i was talking with somebody on one of our previous episodes about cat's eyes do you remember that oh yeah the lighting oh yeah um uh and it was uh i think it was um i think it was joe newman actually Mm -hmm. and it was the um who's the football player he just did the 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 workshop with the nfl oh kaepernick kaepernick great who did the portrait of him on GQ? Hold on a second. I know this is know terrible the, to do. I know the photo, but I don't know who took it. Yeah, I know. It's a great photo, and he's got the cat's eyes in it because he did the two strips to give him the lights. Mm-hmm. But, um, uh, geez, I don't know. Anyway, the, the thing is that artist uses depth of field. He's famous, famous, famous uh, photographer. Of course, I totally whiffed because I did the podcast after work. I'm sorry. I'm tired. I can't help I'm it. I'm going to find it. <laughs> and, um, you know, it's just fantastic because you literally have these eyes, mm-hmm. right? And you have these these slivers on both sides right. turning the, the pupil into a cat's eye, literally. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Like, even their ears are fuzzy because of the depth of field. I mean, the guy must be shooting at one point, too. Yeah, the, and, uh, well, with cats, one of the tricks is that, because you will you also get into the cats, um, their eyes' color will oftentimes change. Right, that's interesting. Um, with different light. And it not sometimes not in real attractive ways. Um, so it's, with with cats, I actually tend to use more continuous light than I do with dogs. Oh, that's interesting. Um, well, let's, this is a good segue into your work, and I can see why you, you suggested this. Going. Where's the first photo? Oh, there it is. First photo here with this, uh, I guess, a boxer almost chewing on a bone, and the depth of field there makes a lot Actually, of sense. Actually, that's a um, Jack Russell Terrier and You're Pitbull kidding mix. Me. It's a puppy. I'm ashamed of myself. It's I don't puppy. know what the dog is. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a puppy, but uh, this is what, what I try to do. That, that when I'm sh- So partially because of my business. Martin Schaller, that's the photographer. Sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Partially because of my business, the um, 
people don't buy all the cool photography of dogs shot with super wide angles. Right. Um, they put them on Instagram, but they don't buy them. Um, what they want is portraits. They want, want to relate to this. That's all that people buy. With they the only want pictures of them mm-hmm. or things that they love. Exactly. So, and it's also because that's what I like to shoot is more bringing out individual personalities of pets which sometimes it's hard and sometimes it's not. T- tell me about that. I mean, I imagine it must be just difficult generally to get them to sit still. Well, you want to one a good trick? Food. No, an assistant. Really? Yeah, absolutely. You have to have an assistant. But I would never think that. Yes. Actually, when I'm doing um, environmental shoots, I usually have two assistants, one to help with the lighting and one to help with the handling of the dog. Really? That's interesting. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Ah, that's funny because I when I do lifestyle shoots with a kid involved, I bring my daughter, and the kid almost always latches onto my kid as a, uh, you know, something to play with because mm-hmm. she's just still a kid. And they recognize that she's the big kid, and then I pay my daughter twenty bucks and I save a lot of money. But the problem <laughs> is the problem using the the dog's human right um, is that they, there's a little neuroticism with it. They want I'm sure there well, is. Well, no, they. Like, <laughs> So a lot of the trick is to guide the dog to the camera, not to do what everyone does, which is just stand up and hold the treat and just say, here, doggy. Mm. Um, that is, gets you the worst expressions in the world. It gets you the, the I'm hungry expression that you see on 20,000 Instagram posts. Um, it's not, but it doesn't get you an interesting expression. Interesting. So part of, the, so part of it is not, not trying to call the dog. It's, it's leading the dog to where you want them, and but their face or their body. Um, is a big part of it, but it's awful hard to do that and hold the camera and set your settings and shoot um, at the same time. Wow! Um, so I have a couple of assistants. One that I is my favorite that I love using because she's really she. All I have to tell is what I want her, you know, what pose or what expression I want her to get, and she, she knows really how to, she, she already knows how to get it mm. um, for me. So I don't have to do all uh, much work with that. There are other times, especially when I'm shooting in someone's house or I'm shooting a lifestyle session, um, where I don't use an, where I don't use um, either an assistant or I definitely use two because they just get in the way because it's small quarters. Right. Um, most of my work, so the, these first shots are studio style shots. I very rarely have dogs in the studio, primarily because. Um, I don't have my own private studio. I'm using a collective studio, and they really don't look highly on my bringing, bringing animals into the studio no, no. and getting them walking on the seamless paper and maybe peeing on the seamless. Um, you can only imagine. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we set up um, what, what either looks like a studio where I have um, dropout cloth, black dropout cloth that I can use, um, or sometimes I use the environment. Like I did a lab a chocolate lab where they had this kitchen that had those big black and white alternating tiles and it was like there's my backdrop right there I mean, right. these beautiful black and white tiles with this beautiful Labrador um, perfect um, so then it's just clearing stuff out of the way because like Satori one of the things I like doing is I like whether it's in, in uh, whether it's a studio style shot um, shot with studio lighting or whether it's an environmental I like clean backgrounds um that are free from distractions, that um, well, when we get to the environmental ones, I'll show you that um, what I mean by that in the environment. But I don't like a lot of stuff. In, I don't like props. I don't like a lot of stuff. I like very clean backgrounds, and I want to focus on that dog's expression. Yeah. It's or f- I'm using dog. It could be a cat, but usually it's dog. I've also done bunnies. I've done a frog. Um, I've done a snake. Um, that was interesting. How'd you do um, that one? There's snake. a story there. Come on, man. Well, I had. Why did you put that? I did on? have to depend on. <laughs> I did have to depend on the owner to to work it. Um, yeah, that was. Make sure the snake is fed. Feed they, the snake. Well, let me put this way. <laughs> my client was very happy with the photographs. I was not. So you were like, um, oh my god, this is horrible. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's it's, and the client was like, these are great. It's like, <laughs> you're like, great. I'm so glad you're happy. I'm never going to put this in my portfolio. Folio. Never, <laughs> never, ever, ever. So um, funny. But yeah, so the first one's Winnie. She's a sweetie. What about the second one here? The second one's act, that's actually mine. Oh, is that? And that's my, my Turkish import. Oh, it's a um, Turkish dog. She was rescued in Istanbul. I, once again, Aww. I mangled the breed. <laughs> oh, no, she's a, no, you didn't. She's a golden. Oh, okay. Golden retriever. I knew it. Nice. She was rescued in <laughs> Istanbul. Um, I used she's getting her, older, huh? I, she's actually only six, but really? she has a very prematurely white face. Yeah. She was on the streets for at least a year, maybe longer. Uh, rescued dog. But she is, um, 
one of the things I do with her a lot, she's my test model. So this was, um, I was about to do a shoot where I went to the people's house. It was going to be a lifestyle shoot. And they had this beautiful round stairway. Um, it's in the house in Glen Echo. It has this big, beautiful round stairway. And we thought, wouldn't it be great if we just put the kids on the stairs and get a couple of posed ones and let them play? And then I got, and then the clients loved that idea. And I got home and I thought, how am I going to light this? Right. So that's where my dog becomes my test subject. Sure. This was the stairway session. Nice. And again, it's all about getting the expression. Yeah. Um, so you and I talked, bef- we talked beforehand about eyes and expressions. And I said, oh, it's always about the eyes. And you said, well, not so much. We're getting there in just yeah. a second. Okay, cool. Um, so, um, well, seniors first. Um, Seniors are have a special senior dogs have a special mm-hmm. breed, and this was done during a set of mini sessions. Yeah, where we were black and these, white shot monochrome. We were shooting all black and whites and all in this one big white wing chair, and the um, uh, so this woman came up and she had two dogs and one young and and this one, and um, Louis, um, and and Louis was I could tell was a really old golden mix. Um, and I know how I'm, the last portrait I did of my my last golden is probably the most meaningful photo that I've ever taken to me. Mm. And so I wanted to make sure, even though it was a mini session, I spent a lot more time with him than I should have, um, that I got her really great portrait of Louis because it's one of the most impactful things. Um, he died about three months after that shot was oh. taken. Um, I have a portrait of my dog like that. Yeah, yeah, an old dog. Mm-hmm. It's hard. It is, but it's also special. It's, it's. I mean, I cherish the photo, the last portrait I have of mine. Um, it's, it's a, it's a really good photo, but right. it's also so meaningful to me. It brings like a happy tear to my eyes whenever I see it. Mm. Um, and I know that we just do. That's pretty cool. And that's is that the younger dog, the next I, photo? I brought this one for a couple of reasons. Um, one is that um, this one really is all about the eyes, well, and the expression on the look, but. It's a lot about the eyes. The other reason I brought this one, oh, yes. That's just right before he passed. Yeah. It's my little gorgeous. boy, June June. I still think about that darn dog every week. That's a gorgeous every photo. Week. I love it. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, he went down two days later. He yeah. was blind. If you look in the eye, you can see it. Yep. Poor guy. The I got to get me another junior. My yeah. dog now, like, God damn, I hate that dog. You must hear people's pet stories all the time. That's they must just story. tell you, like, Jeff, let me, Jeffrey, let me tell you about my pet. <laughs> back, to, back to you, sorry. Anyway, the one with the, um, <laughs> with the golden puppy and the golden in the background is, um, again, it's all about the expression. And the reason right. I chose that one is that was actually taken. I'm going to get a little bit into gear now. That was actually taken with the little Sony RX100. Oh, cool. Which is just a Travel fixed camera, lens. Right, yeah. It's just a fixed lens, one-inch center camera. Um, but you can do great things with a fixed lens, one-inch, um, one-inch center camera. But when even when I'm shooting an action shot like that, to me, it's still about the expression. It's the story um, you're telling, right? And you want so that dog story. When I'm picking, when I'm culling through through a hundred photos and picking the ones I'm going to edit. Um, you know, as long as it's not technically horrid, um, you know, totally out of focus or something, it's always going to be the one that has the expression that's going to be the winner, because those are the ones that tell the story. Or more cases, not tell the story, but but draw you, elicit the story from the viewer, right? To fill in. So, like this one, you can you can ask three different people what they think that dog is thinking or feeling or whatever, and you'll probably get three different answers, hmm. um, or maybe four. Hmm. Let's go on to the next one. Oh, that's, now we're getting more into the environmental Now shots. we're getting environmental portraits. So, so you talked more about getting that expression, and in this case with this beautiful dog on the boardwalk, we got a great expression, obviously, and that yeah. tells a great story. But how does that differ when you're in an environmental shot and you have this backdrop that's kind of... Mm-hmm. Uh, Almost like awesome. I mean, clearly you're shooting the sun's behind somewhat the, facing the camera. Well, you can see um, the sun. Sun's, it's backlit. Yeah. Um, sun's behind the bridge, coming under the bridge um, through oh, that cool. arc. Um, but one thing to notice about when you're looking at both these two side by side is even though there's an environmental quality and the environment adds to the story, there's not a lot of things. 
Right. I don't include most of the bridge. I don't include. There's not much in distraction. There. It's very bland. It's right. again. I'm going for the portrait. What I'm using the environment for more is to add texture, color, um, things like that. So with the little golden puppy, yeah. which. Um, so that's actually on leash with my assistant walking it. Oh, really? And I Absolutely. like how you use the uh, boardwalk as a little bit of a leading line on that one, too. Absolutely. Yeah. But the, um, so my assistant, actually, if you look really closely, you'll see just a little bit of her shadow. Yep, um, right over there in the that's corner. Right. right in the corner. Sorry, that's I keep so migrating was, away from the mic. She's, she's standing slightly to, to on this side, to the right. left of the dog, and slightly behind. Um and I might have even oh, had wow. to photograph a little bit of her out, and then we photo I photograph out, I Photoshop out the um, the, the lead, and, yeah. and I use a um, one of the tricks I learned is to get rid of the dog collar, and, unless it's something special to the owner. Um, I got one owner who had this black lab with this red collar that she had to have in there. It was part of the dog exactly. Outfit. So we just got rid of the ID tags. Wardrobe. Then. Right. Um, but with the, with the other dogs, I use a um, a slip co a slip leash because it's just so much easier to photograph to Photoshop out. Now, of the photos you suggested, this next one is probably my favorite, mm -hmm. just because one of mine too. Beyond just the the great portrait of the dog looking right in the camera, and it sitting just barely touching that right third, great composition. In environmentals, I've been especially lately, especially my beach photography, yeah. I've been really getting into negative space. Yeah, this has fantastic negative space, but it's gorgeous, beautiful scenery, great depth of field. It's just such an inviting photograph. I mean, God, you could sell this to whatever beach you mm -hmm. worked Thank at you. for this and get That's them to beautiful. buy it for their tourism. It is a gorgeous photograph. Well, except for I didn't have a permit that day. So. I don't know what you're talking about. Never <laughs> yeah, do that do myself. I don't um, know what you mean. <laughs> um, What's that? Permit. So, yeah, I didn't this, know you needed one. <laughs> this was a shoot I was doing in California. Yeah. Um, and we have a whole series that were just wonderful. This dog was off leash. So this was in L.A.? This was in L.A. Um, this dog was off leash. So where are the hypodermic needles? No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh, I'm sorry. That's, that's Ocean City, Maryland. <laughs> yeah. That's, no, these features are gorgeous. Um, although I do clean up a little bit of seaweed and oh, kelp. Sure. That's probably yeah, on there. there but Which with, beach? Which beach? This was, um, I believe this was Marina del Rey. Nice. It was either Marina or Playa. I can't remember. Mm. Um, and... Um, so we were doing the shoot with this dog, and it was just running around at sunset, um, or late golden hour, really late golden hour, to get the beautiful golden light coming from um, the right of the dog. <laughs> wow. Um, so funny. Onto the dog. Um, yeah, the sunsets are amazing. And this one, um, we were just using a reflector instead of um, any artificial light. Um, although I do use artificial light a lot, even in sunsets, right. with a tight grid. A little fill. But what I loved, what I personally loved about this one, besides from his face and the one eye showing, is and the negative spaces, that the environment um, adds doesn't add anything except for really color, pattern, and um, and texture. I mean, you get the texture from that spray off the ocean, and from and then you get the pattern and the ripples in the sand going straight back, and then these beautiful pastel colors from the sun and the water. Yeah, that's what I, I think. That's one of the things I like about it is it's clearly the light is the golden hour on yeah. on the dog's back. But I think without that reflection on the left side of the photograph, showing that same color and light, it wouldn't work. It it's wouldn't, almost like you need it to 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 set the context. It wouldn't work, and if you didn't have, and this is where an assistant is just absolutely necessary, if you didn't have the reflector reflecting the light back on the dog, mm. because again, we're late gold now, we're here. Right, if you, if you look at this way, If right? you look at how low the sun is coming down, yeah. it's pretty late It's pretty late in gold now, just before sunset. Um, so the amount of light you're getting from the front is pretty little. Mm. It's all coming from the back. So it, you really have to reflect some back onto him, or otherwise you're going to get really a lot of noise. And, and she was right here, I assume? The reflector? Yeah. Um, a little more further towards um, the left of the dog. Oh, really? Okay. Um, to get it in from the our, uh, From our yeah. left. And then, you know, one of the things that, nice. and just, you know, I mean, it's a little technical, but one of the things I see people doing wrong all the time is they're doing the geometry, and so they're trying the sun's over here, so let's get the reflector down here. Right. 
But that's absolutely wrong because the reflector is becoming your key light, not your... Exactly. As and so if you're doing light. it, it's like lighting someone from below. It's like, no, don't do that. Hold that reflector up. The same way... Give them four chins. The same <laughs> that you put, would position a strobe, you know, slightly above the eyes of the dog. Right. Um, and reflect, get as much light as you can by angling. Sure. And reflect it back in. This one... This is our closing shot. This, this lady holding her beautiful little girl. Um, so, yeah, this one, I do a lot of families and or humans with their dogs. Yeah. But to me, it's still about the expression on the, the dog's the main focus. Right. And the mom, too. The mom showing the expression. I love how you have, like, the, the sunbursts coming in, too. Mm -hmm. It's great. The, yeah, this was taken during sunset, um, late golden hour sunset. Um, we moved into sunset. We didn't get a good sunset, though. But we get all that beautiful gold reflection um, on the water. That's all you can ask for. Um, and then the dog winking his eye was the selling point of this one. It was just like, this is... Fantastic, right? And also her fo her focus is also on the dog's expression, right. which is what I love, and the, the little wrinkles in its belly. Uh, you can almost see the dog in its mind. Again, showing that you were successful. In my mind, when I see this photo, I'm like, the dog's like, I got her. <laughs> that was actually a 10-week-old pup. Oh, That's a Ridgeback who's now huge. He's now like 100 pounds. Mommy, I own you. <laughs> Have another treat, right? No, it's a great dog. Jeff. Oh, that's that's a really important thing. Is you have to really important thing about pet photography. You have to have the best high quality treats you can possibly muster up. Oh, I bet. Um, and lots of toys and all sorts of good things. So moving forward, as you go into LA and this next stage mm -hmm. in your photography, I mean, in some ways, it's an opportunity to. I always look at change as an opportunity to reset or mm -hmm. refocus or attain new focus. Where are you at with that right now? I'm just curious as an artist. Well, business-wise, it's um, um, in L.A. I mean, I have a very small client base now. Expanding it, it's pretty much going to be the same, except for I probably won't do a lot of indoor studio stuff because when your studio is that, right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's like you, know, you can't miss. I mean, L.A.'s got great weather, um, too. And that's yeah. also with families. Um, um, it, it's also with families. Shooting on the beach is just incredible. Um, with my other things, I'll still continue. One of my loves is is um, um, perform performers, main, main, especially dancers. Um, so I'll still be shooting dancers. In L.A., whenever I'm there, I'm always shooting skaters um, because it's just all sorts of fun and challenging. Sure. But shooting skaters in um, against sunsets, shots, against beautiful California sunsets, is just amazing. Yeah. Um, and, you know, getting into beach photography and shooting my dog on the beach every day or every whenever um, will be pretty incredible. That's cool. So, Jeffrey, where can people find you online? They can find me on my website is jeffreymarsphotography.com. Um, for the pets, it's jeffreymarsphotography.com forward slash paw prints. I love um, that. Exactly. And then on Instagram, I have two. Um, my personal one is Jeffrey in DC, which will become Jeffrey in LA. I think I have a lock on that um, eventually. And then the pet photography is imminent domain, I M I N E N T domain. Um, and that's in honor of my pup, Emmy, whose name is Imogen or Emmy. And my house has become the imminent domain. Ah. Um, so the Instagram is also imminent domain. Cool. Um, so we'll get and then on Facebook at Jeffrey Morris Photography. I'll make sure that all those are in the show notes yep. on the episode page so that people can find it and uh, follow you. And keep rocking that camera, brother. Absolutely. All right, man. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thanks for listening to the <laughs> Show Me Podcast with Jeff Livingston. Hey, More shows, sponsorship, and donation information are available at showmepodcast.com. <laughs>